I believe we're starting again. <laughs> Come on now. We're going to talk about all that, Doug. Don't you? You're not, you ain't missing out on anything. Um, uh, we're going to keep up the spirits. Uh, Doug, we're going to talk about all that. We're going to ask questions. We're going to answer questions and everything. So uh, bear with me. Make sure you guys and girls can all see me. Uh, we're all good. Yay. Can we start this over again? All right. Okay. All right, so it should be much smoother. It should be much clearer. Um, oh, Doug hasn't gotten here yet? Okay, well, uh, don't worry about that. I saw Doug P say he missed something along the way. What is the advantage of TNG controller? So I just wanted to make sure that um, uh, he understood, you know, you guys understand what it is and all. So, um, all right, let's go back over to where we were before we were interrupted by a poor quality stream. Okay. All right. So I believe we're good. What I was saying is, is if you get this uh, new version... Um, you know, new version is available. Definitely, all you know, update that. Go ahead and update that. But the main key thing uh, when we're migrating over to um, TNG is to make sure that our driver is up to date. Okay, we want to make sure the driver's up to date. Now we'll get it. Let me let let me get through the installation process part, and then we'll ask answer the questions like what is it good for, what is all this, and what is all that. Okay. Um, I'm out of uniform, uh, Stephen. I am because my suitcase is still in my truck, uh, and uh, all of my digital woodcarver clothes are in my suitcase. I didn't get it out, so I'm in red today. Uh, <laughs> And Burl even bought me some new shirts too, and I didn't even have one available. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click yes on this and let it do its thing, whatever it's doing. All right, now, my software is going to be grayed out because we. Um, my software is grayed out because, of course, we are not uh, connected to a control box. If, by the way, guys and girls, if you ever open up your controller software and you see that your controller is grayed out, then um, that means there's no communication between the computer and the machine. Okay? No communication between the computer and the machine. And so we are good to go there and let's go ahead and let that update run oops let's update that run let that update run there was a class I was teaching I'm teaching a class for the beginners all you new guys and girls you're gonna get a class on the machines and stuff too though that's what that was all right, so let's open up that Planet CNC USB controller back up. Now, when the uh, it takes a second for the controller to open up, that's one thing I like about TNG. It's a little bit more instantaneous uh, in things, and we don't have to worry about the Windows updates and stuff anymore and all that wonderful stuff. All right, I believe that update ran. Possibly not. We'll find out. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, it ran. You're going to see my window uh, regenerate itself and stuff. And we're good to go. Okay. So I want to take a second. I want to go into my file explorer. Um, and we'll minimize that. But 
so we want our file explorer open but I also want to take a minute and I want to go into the Cortana down here and I want to type in device manager device manager When that device manager opens up, and I hope, I don't know if this will work while we're uh, not connected to it, um, but, no, it won't, ah, you kill me. You're gonna see Planet CNC device driver in this device manager, and if you right click and click on the properties, it'll say version 101010. Um, Damn, I wish I had my box hooked up. Sorry, guys and girls. I thought I had this all under control. All right, let's start fresh. <clears throat> Open up a web browser. On that web browser, I want you to go to, if you have not done so already, I want you to go to www.planet-cnc.com. This is if you have not changed over and already downloaded the, yes, it is being recorded, Wayne. Um, this is not if you've not, if you've just got CNC USB controller, you haven't installed the TNG, you haven't ran it or updated your driver, none of that stuff. This is if you've got CNC USB controller and you're ready to migrate. First thing we want to do is we want to go to planetcnc.com. We want to go to the software option of their products. In the software option of the products, we want to go to choose your download and we want to choose the Planet CNC driver. We want to download and install that Planet CNC driver. Okay. Now I'm in Google Chrome, so you'll see at the bottom left of the screen that the Planet CNC driver will load at the bottom. Now when that driver is finished downloading, we're going to double click on it and open it up. And then we're going to extract it. It's going to be a zip file, right? So you should see extract all. If you don't see extract all over here, you should see compressed folder tools the word extract and um, click on that and that'll open up the extract all button here click on extract all now if you're working on a Windows 7 or an older PC and things uh, then you're most likely gonna have like WinZip on your computer um, you just run your extraction through WinZip once it extracts and opens up then we want to go ahead and run that driver this is updating the driver so we can transfer transfer or migrate over to planet cnc we need to make sure that our driver for usb cnc controller is up to its most up to date so we'll go ahead and uh run that driver installation You guys probably lost me for a second uh, because my computer was asking for permission to open. All right. Now, when this driver installs, you see this, would you like to install the device driver? We have a second install box that pops up. We want to make sure that that is checked for always trust software from Planet CNC DOO. We want to click the install button. That will allow the CNC USB controller through the What do you mean where did I go? You guys still hear me?
You just asked, did somebody just text me and ask me where I went to? Joe? Joe? Is there a Joe in the group? Ask me where I went to. Can you guys not hear me? Okay. So Joe, Joe just texted me and asked me where I went. And so I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. So we're going to click on finish. Okay. We're going to click on finish and that'll finish the installed driver update. Now, um, notice how I have another one up there. I clicked too many times and I opened this twice. So we're going to click cancel on that one because we've already installed it. I happened to hit it twice. Um, did you update the Facebook link? No, I did not. No, I did not. Bear with me a second while I do that for all my Facebook viewers. Stand by. Let's see here. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can get them to uh, a, a hundred times in there so hopefully they'll come over Ooh, that's cool butch awesome butch i like that uh cookie dough cutter thingy majigger okay now let's get back to business here um here hold on a second let me paste it here again for him all right joe joe join us again and uh hopefully that will uh get you set back up all right, so we've got the driver installed. Now, once we, once the driver's installed, then we're good to go. Okay, we just need to make sure that that um, we just need to make sure that that um, driver is up to date. Up, it's late. We have the latest driver installed. Okay, now from there, you should have um, one of two things. I'm going to provide you with the software link in the Facebook group, but in case for you guys and girls that uh, are not in the Facebook group and you want to know where to find this file, we are going to go back to Planet CNC and we're going to choose the Planet CNC TNG 2017.10.30 beta version of the CNC USB controller. Hey Jared. Um, we're going to install or download to install this Planet CNC TNG 2017.10.30 beta file. Okay. That's what you want to install. So we're going to download that. Floyd, you didn't miss anything other than me screwing up, buddy. Uh, Floyd, you didn't miss anything but me screwing up. Uh, Rick, are you there, Rick? Uh, you think I dropped or is that um, you still able to see me, hear me, all that wonderful stuff? All right, 
I dropped the ball on uh, getting that link uh, in Facebook, boys and girls. So, all right. Let's do a sound check. How's the sound? One, two, three. Besides my irritating voice right about now. <laughs> okay. So here's the process. Here, let, let's let's kind of back up a little bit. Let's kind of back up a little bit. The TNG software is for digital wood carver, mini carvers, DWC twenty four forty carvers that have the MK. 3-4 board or later. MK 3-4 board or later. If you have the MK 2-4 board, you have the older white top table with an MK 2-4 board, then you would be, if you wanted to upgrade to the new TNG software, then you would need to update your board. That update kit for the board is $275. Now, how to tell how to tell if uh, how to tell what boards you have so the how do we tell what boards you have the handheld control pendant or the pendant that's sitting on your white table top uh, that six by six inch pendant the um, if you look at the side of it the parallel cable the parallel cable do not take your parallel cable off okay just look at the side of the control pin and look at the parallel cable if that parallel cable looks like that it's plugged into a plug and you can see a gap between the side of the pendant and the parallel cable then you have an mk24 board if that parallel cable is flush up against the side of that six by six pendant and there is no gap in between the plug or you know the parallel cable and the uh, side of that pendant then you have an MK34 board so if you can see a gap between the parallel cable and the side of your six by six inch pendant then you have the MK24 board and TNG would not apply to you unless you upgraded to the 34 board so we all on the same page on that one. Does that does that make sense now? Um, Wayne, I, <clears throat> I'm, my stream might be a little bit behind, but let me know if that answered your question. How to check what board you have? Wayne, you're a new customer. You have a MK34 board. This is from anything earlier than 2016. Anything earlier than 2016. Okay. In some of the 2016s, I think, had an MK24, but I doubt it. And Wayne, you've had your machine for uh, post a pic later. I will post a picture later if I can find somebody with a 6x6 control pendant and an MK24 board because I don't have access to one of those to take a picture. <laughs> uh, the CNC USB controller will tell you as well. Um, the CNC USB controller software will tell you as well. If you go up to help, activate license. In the activation window, you will have a serial number over here to where it says no serial number in my window. Right now, my window says no serial number because I am not connected to a control box. I want you guys to understand that. You will have a serial number. I do not because I'm not connected to my control box. If your USB uh, CNC software and your computer are not talking to each other because you have your USB cable unplugged or something, then your serial number might not show up as well. But if you got all nice colorful buttons, your serial number will show up. And if that serial number ends with an MK3, then you have the 3-4 board. If it ends with an MK2 or 2-4, then you have a 2-4 board. The quick and dirty way of looking at it, the, not dirty way, but the, the quickest way of it is look at your control pendant, that 6x6 six six control pendant, and on the 
side of it, if there's a gap, then you have the MK24 board. And let's take a second because I may still have I may still have a picture somewhere on my computer of an older style machine, my older machine. So let's take a quick detour for a second and go into my backup files and scroll down to my through my millions and millions and millions of photos. Oh, there was one. But does it show the pendant? Let's take a look. No, it doesn't show the pendant. I don't have the pendant, guys. All right. So I don't have uh, the... I don't have a photo of the um, MK24 board. All right. So... Um, Four months, yeah, you have the MK34 board, Wayne, so this applies to you. What about MK3 board? Yes, Joe, MK3 is the 3-4. MK, oh no, Joe, you might have the big four byte machine, so you actually have a physical MK3. Yes, that applies. MK3, MK34, uh, that all applies. Yes, Wayne. Yep. Uh, yeah, you. it applies to you too, buddy. All right, so let's see here. Bum, 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 bum. Steven's got one. Do you, Steven, do you have a picture of the MK24? Uh, 24? Because remember, the reason why, Steven, yeah, you did upgrade to the from the 24 to the 34. The 24 board has that actual parallel cable plug, you know, soldered on the board. The MK34 doesn't. And that's why the MK34 is hardwired in. So there's no gap in between, and the MK24 is plugged in to the side of the control pendant. Not your box, your pendant, that six inch by six inch control pendant. Um, and uh, the uh, that's, a, that's a quick identifier, or you can look in the file settings. All right, let's not get hung up on that. Uh, you, uh, if you wanna call me, I can walk you through that, uh, you know, or something at some point in time with your board and all, but here we go. Hold on a second. Ladies and gentlemen, someone just sent me a picture. Hold on a second. That's an MK34 board picture. Whoever sent that to me, stand by. Let me transfer that over to my computer. Um, and stand by. Let me, let me transfer this over to my computer so you can see the MK24 board. So let's go into settings. <clears throat> Bluetooth. This is going to be, by the way, another nice little clean uh, video of this uh, versus a live stream. Sometimes the live stream gets into all these little, gets it goes off topic sometimes. But um, let's scroll down and send or receive files via Bluetooth. We're going to receive files. Waiting for that connection. And here it comes. Awesome Blossom. We're gonna click on Finish. And then we're gonna go up to our Laser Project Files. Let's go to Pictures. Oh, sorry, I was just there. Uh, where is that? There we go. Laser projects. All right, let's find that MK34 board that just got posted in here. It is hiding. Look at all y'all's project files that uh, I'm showing off uh, to people all across the world. Let's see here. Dum, dum, dum. Give them some inspiration. You guys are doing wonderful stuff. Where the frick did that board go, guys? Do y'all see it in here? 
If you see your photo, raise your hand. Um, let's try that one more time. <laughs> this is terrible. All right, Bluetooth, Office PC. Send and receive files, receive files, standby. <laughs> I know I want you to I want you to stay seated. We're going to change this and we're going to change we're going to go into our desktop here and we're going to make a new folder in our desktop called MK2 that's a 34 board. 34 photo just so I know what I'm looking for so we're not messing around with this stuff. We're going to click on finish. Wonderful. Now we're going to go to our desktop here and we're going to find that MK34 photo and we're going to, that photo is a file. Oh geez, Laney, come on. Stand by. It's a file because somebody sent it to me as a text. I got to save it to my album first. My gosh. I'm sorry everybody. Stand by one minute. We're going to share this photo for the last time to Bluetooth. That Bluetooth is going to go to that Office PC and that Office stuff. By the way, this is me trying to get a photo for y'all, so stand by. <laughs> this has nothing to do with installing TNG. Uh, Bluetooth and other devices. We're going to scroll down to receive. Just going to wait for that connection. We're going to sit by, sit by too. You can sit by or stand by. Just hang tight. We're going to say hang tight or hang tin. <laughs> come on. That connection, come on there, connection. It's uploading. All right, thank you again for that uh, picture, whoever just sent me that other picture. We're, 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 at, we're trying to get one picture across now, and we'll get that one too. <laughs> All right, sending file, here it comes. Wonderful. All right, we're going to click Finish. We're going to come in here, and here's the photo. All right, now let's back up. You see this? You see this parallel cable, how it's flush up against the side of the box? That is an MK34 board. Okay? That is an MK34 board. Now, someone else just texted me a photo. Thank you very much for taking the time to do that. Uh, this is an MK24. No, wait, hold on. That is a 2-4. That is a 2-4. Okay, this is a 2-4. You sent me a misleading photo, man. Um, or, I might, or I might have it backwards what Burl told me. No, no, no. It's a 2-4. It's a 2-4. Okay, let's take a look here. Let's let me actually just transfer this file of this uh God almighty. Stand by. We're gonna do this one last time. That's terrible. You guys are probably getting a crack up out of this. Um sorry. Hey Ronnie, thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Alright, we're gonna save this photo. We're gonna send this one over uh to uh, Bluetooth real quick. And let's go back in here and receive this file. <laughs> you guys are like, this guy's nuts. How are we supposed to learn anything from Laney? Okay. 
All right, so let's uh, close this for a minute. So, and Burl, uh, if Burl was around, he'd probably say, no, Lenny, you have it backwards. I told you if there's a gap, it looks like it's plugged into a plug, then that's an MK24. So you see this, you see this uh, plug right here? And Ronnie, your board is set back a little bit. Uh, in, the, in other boards, that plug is kind of out a little bit more, but um, uh, that's why it was flush. But anyhow, you see this plug on the side of the board here? One, it says MK24 over on the printed white area of the board over here. But number two, uh, that plug that's plugging into. On your MK34 board, there's a bunch of wires coming out of that parallel port and plugged into various positions. Um, this is an MK24 board. So the it's not going to be, now that I see this and the, the, the possibility of your board and your pendant being set back, backwards, you know, and it's not, um, it's not, it's, you know, kind of cut into that a little bit. I think I'm backwards on what Burl told me. I think the MK24 board is recessed in. The MK34 board is flush. No. Shoot. What did he say? Ignore this. All of it. Go to your CNC USB controller, click on help, activate license, look at your serial number. If it ends with a 24, you've got an MK24. If it ends with a 34, you got an MK34. Done and done. Moving on. <laughs> Holy jamoly. All right. That's how you tell if you have an MK2 or an MK3 for board. Forget looking at the pendant. You can look at the pendant. You can open the pendant. Whatever. If your pendant has MK24 printed on it, uh, on the inside on the board, then that's what you've got. All right. <laughs> I screwed that up in a major way trying to make a very simple explanation. I'm not calling Burl. It's uh, it's late at night and he's working on building machines. I've sold 40 machines since January. Isn't that crazy? 40 machines since January, since the first woodworking show started. I'm crazy. All right. Um, by the way, Burl will be at the uh, woodworking shows in Ontario, Canada. Uh, he's going to be taking my place this year, Wayne. Uh, Burl will be at the Ontario Woodworking Shows in Ontario, Canada. Uh, that's coming up here, what, in a week or two? Something like that. He'll be there. Uh, so, wonderful stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just make sure that your driver is set up for your CNC USB controller before we migrate and update to Planet CNC's TNG software. Okay? All right, I've just downloaded uh, the TNG software. We want the .30 beta version if you're downloading it off the internet. If you are a new user, your flash drive has the software on it. When I say a new user, if you bought your unit in the last two weeks, last week or two, all new machines go out with TNG. There will not be any CNC controller machines, CNC USB controller machines going out anymore. They're all gonna be sent out with the TNG software. So if you are new and joining me tonight, you have TNG if you purchased at the last two woodworking shows, um, or let's call it Indiana and St. Louis, you should have TNG. Everything else is Planet CNC. Okay. Now that we've downloaded that Planet CNC TNG software, we're going to, again, we're going to extract it. We're gonna extract that zip file. We're gonna click on extract. When it extracts, it's gonna open up. Did I do it twice? I did it twice. Okay. When it extracts, it's gonna open up. And we're going to run, double click on it and run that installation. Now it's gonna ask for permission to run, so you might see a little bit of a black screen for a minute. Wayne, you have the new board too. 
Wayne, you have the MK34 new board in your machine. All right. Okay, so we're going to next, next, next install this software. Thank you, Jennifer, for never calling me nuts to my face uh, because I am nuts sometimes. Sometimes. I'm nuts. You know why I'm nuts? Because I really wanted this, this class to be nice and organized. I wanted to have my control box on my desk so I could plug my USB cable in. I wanted to be able to run through this installation flawlessly. And, of course, I run into hiccups and... Uh, I I I I um I was working with a couple of young very nice new people Mr. and Mrs. Steiner on their training today and we worked right up to show time and I didn't by the time I realized uh that my box was all zip tied and and <laughs> fastened down uh it was 7:15 it was like 15 minutes after show time so we're going to get through this all right. Now, one thing I want you to notice about the Planet CNC TNG software automatically, uh, when you first open it up, you're going to have a gray background. Okay, you're going to have a gray background, and up in the top right corner, it's going to say Planet CNC. That's because the Planet CNC driver's installed with this, or not driver, I'm sorry, the setting file. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to install our setting file. Okay, so we're going to go to File. We're going to go down to import settings. In the Planet CNC folder on your C drive in Program Files uh, x86 Planet CNC folder, you will have the files that you need, and we should have a file setting, our DWC setting, here. We don't, so we're going to drop it there real quick. So. I'm going to go to my flash drive where I have my TNG installation files. And if you have, uh, if you guys and girls uh, just bought recently and you've got your flash drive with TNG, on your flash drive you're going to have your T Planet, uh, your uh, TNG software folder. In that folder is the Planet TNG software, Planet CNC TNG. We'll just call it TNG for short. And in that folder, is where you will find your installation software and your setting file. So I'm going to right click on this setting file that I've got here and you would do the same thing. If you downloaded it off the setting file off of Facebook, wherever you downloaded it to, you would do the same thing. If it went to your downloads folder, if it went to your documents folder, wherever it went to is uh, you need to take and you need to copy it or cut it or whatever you want to do. We're going to copy this setting file and we're going to go into this PC. We're going to go into our C drive. Ooh, my C drive is getting kind of packed. <clears throat> um, we're going to go into Program Files x86. We're going to scroll down. Remember now, you're going to have uh, the CNC USB controller folder in there, but we're not in there anymore. we got to come down to Planet CNC. You've got a new Planet CNC folder once you install that CNC software, that TNG software. So let's open up that Planet CNC folder and we are going to right click and paste. When you do that, it's going to say you need to provide permission to paste in this folder. We're going to click continue to do so. Oh, very nice, Dennis. Awesome. Good news on uh, Mr. McMillan. Thank you for that if you helped out with that. I know you were close to him, but very cool. Um, all right. Now that that file is installed, we can go ahead and come back, and you should see it in that CNC, Planet CNC TNG folder. We are going to click on that and click Open. When we do, it's going to turn this bright neon green 
First thing that you're going to do, especially if you're using the older, uh, not when I say older guys, I'm talking like a day or two old. If you're using the file that I posted in the Facebook group, you're going to, when you load it, you're going to get this neon green. The first thing you're going to do is go to file, down to settings. You're gonna click on colors and you have ultimate control on what your colors are gonna be for your screen. I would recommend on that custom color that we set, that funky neon green, we go in here and we click on that star and let's just darken it up a bit, okay? Darken that up a bit. I'm just pulling that little icon down. Click back on that star and then click okay and that will change that background to a little bit more muted darker color heck you could make it pink for all I care just play with your colors and and adjust them the way you want now don't make it pink because CNC is supposed to be not pink okay all right <clears throat> now I was gonna say girly but I can't say that because we have some bad a we have some cool kick butt female carvers in our family so I can't say pink is girly because and I can't say that you know you know because it's not anyway get off of that subject before I dig a hole all right now up at the top it should say digital wood carver now okay all right first thing you're gonna do after you change your color is and this should be the second thing because the first thing we did was import the setting file okay import the setting file uh, can I get the wood grain back? Of course, Dennis, you can, you can not get the wood grain back. Uh, let's take a look here and let's see what we find out as far as graphics. No. No. No, but if you want the wood grain back or something similar to it or what have you, come in here and change this to kind of a nice brown color. Click OK. Whatever you want. You know what I mean? No, you do not have to import the settings every time. Um, but we will, we will be importing them one more time as soon as we finish all the little setup. Okay. Um, but no, we can't put a graphic in there, Dennis. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Pick a color, any color. Now, so whatever color you want that to be, that is the uh, custom color. You can drop it down. Now in those colors, just so you know, and you guys, you know, I want you to know your settings and all. Don't play around too much in there, but no, I'm just kidding. You can do you can, whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you screw something up, man, go back to your original settings. If you mess something up, things start acting funky with your machine, then go back to your original settings that you downloaded out of the Facebook group and then start over. <laughs> all right. Now, your background color of your board here, that's the background, okay? So if I made this background kind of a, you know, off-white, grayish color, what have you, then that is my background, all right? I'm going to go back to black. I like black. All right, that's your background. Now, you can, um, let's go to settings. Let's kind of run through this. Your axes are over here, your axes box, okay? The red color is when an axis is, you know, clicked on or active, it, it's red, okay? Your grid, your grid are these little dots that are on your screen. They're, they're green. Make them whatever color you want. Your limits... This is your 2440 or your 20, uh, 1824 if you're on the mini carver. 
That's your limit line. That's that orange line right there. Your extents, your extents, this light blue area here, that's your extents uh, when you're uh, when you have a toolpath file in. Um, extents feed and gauges. The gauges are this these green gauges. They move up and down as you're going through. Um, all your lines and your G code, your lines and, and everything, all of those things you can change your colors on. You can change your colors on your line number, your G code, actual letter, you know, everything. You have so much control in here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right. So fit, pick a color, any color that best suits your personality. There you go. All right. Now. You might try clear. There you go. Um, that would be kind of a white. Now, in here, we're going to click on File Settings one more time. We're going to go back in that box, and we're going to click on Connection. This is the important stuff, guys and girls. Uh, we're going to click on Connection. And for a default connection, you're probably going to see CNC USB MK349972. You'll probably see that as a default setting because when these settings were created, that was the machine serial number that we created them on. But underneath the word simulation, your serial number for your board will be listed under the word simulation. I do not have a control box connected to my software right now, so you do not see the number. But if you see your, when you see your number, you're going to double click on that. You're gonna double click on your license board. And it's going to put that up here overriding this 9972. It's going to put your license board in the primary controller box. Okay? The primary controller box. You're going to click OK. From there, you are going to export those settings. And you're going to click on the setting file that you have and you're going to save. It's going to ask if you want to replace it. Yes, you do, because you want to update it with your settings. <clears throat> now, some of you uh, have experienced uh, when you load the TNG software that your handheld control pendant isn't working anymore or it doesn't work. It's because the pins for the control pendant have not been set. So what you would do is, we're going to go back into the settings one more time, and under shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, you're going to scroll all the way down. you got a long way to go until you get to the jogging. <clears throat> okay. Once you get to the jogging, you're going to see either on this jog for your X minus X plus, Y minus Y plus, Z minus Z plus, and even the A minus A plus if you have a fourth axis, you're going to see, and by the way, these are the shortcut codes for um, you know those actions as well. But anyway, you're going to either see a blank box under the pin column, or you're going to see jog 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, if you don't see any of uh, anything in here, then we need to add the pin. Okay, we need to double, we need to click on the little arrows and we need to choose what pin it is. Now, for most of the control pendants, sorry, Debbie, I don't know what to do about my little. Why is it blurry? Hold on a minute. Pause and unpause and make sure in your settings that the little sprocket underneath the video that you have that either set to auto 1080p or you actually click on 1080p so it locks in on that quality and it will clear up okay 
on the little gear or sprocket. Let me show you here. I'll even bring it over to this side. This is y'all's stream. Look, y'all can see each other. On your stream, you are you're going to click on over the on your video. You should have a gear or sprocket. It should say HD up there. Um, you're going to click on that, and for the quality. You are either going to have be at 1080p or you're going to be at auto. Now I have it set for 1080p, but if you want to lock it in, you can just click on 1080p and that should clear things up. Okay, let's move that back over to the other side so y'all don't see yourself talking to one another. All right, cool beans. All right, <clears throat> now in those jogs. Uh, for most of the pendants, this should be set, and I didn't set it uh, when I shared this file, but this should be set to Jog 2. And now we can't just click on Jog 2. We've got to, it's already, Jog 2 is already taken. So we got to come over here and we got to turn off Jog 1. Make it blank, that little three dotted line right there. Make it blank. So that way we can change that to Jog 1. And now we can come up here and make that Jog 2. So it's going to be backwards. 2, 1. X minus X plus. Jog 2, Jog 1. Now for Jog 3 and 4, we're going to reverse those as well. But they're both used. So we have to take Jog 3. Make that 3 dotted line right there to blank it out. That way we can change this Jog 4 to Jog 3. Then we're going to go back up to this blank. And we're going to make that Jog 4. So it should be so far Jog 2, Jog 1. Jog 4, Jog 3. You guys seeing a pattern here? All right. So on this uh, next one, we're going to blank this out. We're going to make this jog six, jog five, and make this blank jog six. So two, one, four, three, six, five. Okay. And then, of course, on your A axis, uh, if you have an A axis, check your rotation. Uh, and be, but we kind of leave that, that should actually be kind of blank uh, on those two because we do not have an A axis button. We don't have an A axis button on our control pendant. Okay. So jog two, jog one, jog four, jog three, jog six, jog five. Okay. All right, now that we've set those pins, we're gonna one more time, should be the last time we have to do this, we are going to export that change that we just made in the settings. And we're gonna overwrite that new setting file. And if you want to, this, this, this setting file was made on January 8th of 2018. If you want to, we can rename it to February 12, 18. UWC TNG February 12, 18. We can click on save. Now, if you do that, you need to make sure that you come and import that setting file so it points to it every time you open and close your program. I recommend just clicking on and overriding the existing setting file, but if you want to keep that master setting file as a master, uh, or whatever reason you want to rewrite the new updates then make sure you import those settings so that uh, you're pointing to that new file that we just created all right once we've done that at this point we would come over to the help menu license management and we would click on activate generate activation code now for me for me there's no device listed. My, my, my board would be listed here. My 10159 board. I would click on that board and it will generate a code down here in this code box. Yes, I can, Baron. Give me one second. I would generate the code I would click on my device and again my device is not showing here um, because I do not have my controller box plugged in but 
your device, your board will be listed here in this device list. You will click on that and it will generate a code. You will copy that code. When you're finished copying that code, you're going to go to your email, whatever you use to write emails, and you are going to compose an email. Okay, where's my email? We're going to compose an email. That email is going to go to support at planet dash cnc.com the subject line is going to be planet oops subject line is going to be planet dash cnc not dash <laughs> planet cnc tng license activation key Okay, or key request, whatever you want to call it. I have created a template for you. If we go into, if we take a detour for two seconds, if we go into the file section of the Digital Woodcarver Owners Group, and if we scroll down to the by the way, guys and girls, for uh, Mini Carver, the new TNG uh, Mini Carver settings are right here. Mill Mini 218. Those settings are in there. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to go through and we are going to find that PDF. Bear with me for a second. A lot of files being posted. You guys are awesome about that. We're going to scroll down a little bit further. Well, maybe a lot further. Let me go back up to the top here. Let's see what you guys have created there. TNG. TNG Mini. We're going to go into the... I'm not going to scroll all the way through all the letters. Let's go with the uh, bum, 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 bum. We're going to go with the regular modified settings. So let's go down. Let's scroll down. Let's scroll down. <clears throat> we're looking for the PDF file. PDF file. So we're going to scroll down until we get to the PDF file that has been provided to you. One of these days we'll figure out how to organize this. Right here, Planet CNC TNG PDF. That's one. That's one. That's going to be the manual. That is the manual for TNG software. That is not the instruction sheet, but that is the manual. We're going to scroll down right here to the Planet CNC TNG Download and Install Setup PDF. We're going to open that PDF up and we're going to scroll all the way down and wait a minute. Steven Allen says smoother for everyone. You can also get control of speed and jog while you're motion. Okay. Uh, Y'all are talking to each other. Sorry. Um, at the very bottom of that instruction sheet is an email template that you can use. Dear support, my name is blank. I'm a customer of Digital Woodcarver and they've recommended, you know, Burl and Laney have recommended I update the TNG software. You've downloaded the new software, installed and updated the firmware of your board. You've got a license code generated. You're going to paste that code in there and you're going to come in and click your name. Of course, get rid of the lines, but you can copy and paste and use this email. So we'll come in here and we'll go right click copy, go back to our email and paste and then whatever that code is okay whatever your code is 
you're going to send that email to support at planetcnc.com. <clears throat> All right. Within 24 to 36 hours, Planet CNC will email you back your license key. Your license key. A typical license key, I'll give you a quick example of a license key. Your key example, let me open up a notepad here. <clears throat> That license key, you're gonna see a code. It's almost like HTML code. You're gonna see the word key in these open and close or greater than, less than brackets, whatever you wanna call them. This, uh, it, there's going to be some information in this code. It may be one or two lines, whatever it is. But at the very end of that license key, you're going to see the closing brackets of that key. Okay, with the forward slash, K-E-Y. You want to highlight that entire key out of that email, the entire code and key. You want to copy that. And in your Planet CNC USB controller software, you're going to go to Help, License Management, My Licenses. You're going to Import, and you are going to paste that license key in there. You're going to click OK. Now my license key is uh, um, a bad file because it's just a bunch of X's, so I'm getting an error. But um, you will paste that key that Planet CNC gives you. Now, for you individuals that your computers and machines came with TNG that just purchased the last week or so, last week, this past week, you do not have to do that. Your license key is located on the flash drive. Your license key is located on the flash drive in the TNG, uh, not, I'm sorry, not in, not in any of the folders. It's gonna be here and it's gonna say LIC with a pound sign and whatever number, that's your license code, that LIC pound. Let me make up one just to, uh, File, save as. We're gonna go into the flash drive. So your license should look like this, okay? LIC pound with a number .txt. You will find it on your flash drive, okay? You'll find it on your flash drive in with all your other folders, your TNG software and everything, okay? Now, just as a side note, for anybody with your disk or your flash drive, if you're a new user and all that, under the Vetric Post folder, unrelated topic is your tool databases. Okay, your tool database files. Uh, there's a laser post processor and a laser tool file if you've got the DWC laser, but and then a little text note showing you or telling you um, what post processor to use. Okay, now if you have if you have V9 of the Vetric software, you can also also use the digital wood carver inch So, <clears throat> either one of those two, G code inch dot tap, digital wood carver inch tap. Okay, either one of those two. Now, if you are working in millimeters, uh, if you are working in millimeters, then um, 
if you're working in millimeters and stuff, then you would use the digital wood carver millimeter tap or the G code millimeter tap. You know, if you're in metric world. All right, all right. Okay, so that was an unrelated topic. Uh, uh, that I just want to get you on that one. All right, guys and girls. So the uh, license. Okay, we would paste that in. Now, when we paste that in, we're going to have, if you look on the right bottom side of the screen, you've got this little round LED. Okay, little round LED. Now, if we go in and we take a look at the, uh, let's go back, let's back up a second. And if we go and look at the manual, the manual of Planet CNC TNG, if we scroll down, there are step-by-step -step instructions on installing the software in here as well. Okay, but a little bit more. See, there's that CNC driver. Everything I just told you is in printed manual form. Um, but let's scroll down. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Bear with me a second while I kind of get past all the installation stuff because this shows two installations, one on a PC, the other on a Linux. So let's get past the installation for a moment. Stand by a second, almost there. Okay. Got that little LED. Let's get past the MIDI window. Come on down. You want to write right. That little LED light on the bottom right is a code indicator. The green light indicates that everything is loaded, you are connected, and um, your firmware is uh, installed and activated, okay? The license was found, all that stuff. The green light with a little X in the middle indicates the software does not find the proper license code, okay? That you're connected to your machine, but the license code is not proper. <clears throat> The orange light with an X on it indicates the controller firmware version is not correct. The gray light indicates no communication between the controller machine and the software, okay? So you can reconnect by clicking on the machine menu, go down to controller and reconnect. All right? Make sure that your primary, your, your, your controller number is in the primary controller in the settings. And I'll go back and show you that again. I got to go back and show Baron one thing real quick as well. Red light on the status bar indicates that the software is processing a motion. Motion, it's running. So it's running a job. Okay. All right. So those little LED lights are indicators as to, you know, communicating with you, letting you know. But if you got a solid green light, you're good to go. Okay, you're connected. Now, let's close out of that. That's this little LED in the bottom right corner of the software. <clears throat> Let me take a drink because my throat's dry. And it sounds like I'm yelling at y'all and I'm not. I'm just a horse. Horse is a horse, of course. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, a couple of little things that are different from the USB... Um. <laughs> Every time I say stand by, you take a shot. You guys would be drunk by the first five minutes, because I'm always telling you to stand by. Um, in the CNC USB controller, uh, let's look at some of the differences. Uh, if we can kind of go side by side for a moment, we can go by side by side. Let me open up my CNC USB controller software again. We're going to go blank for a second. Um,
let my uh, CNC USB controller generate. <clears throat> All right, let's put our TNG back on top. Okay. <clears throat> now, right now, all the buttons are grayed out and everything. Uh, I wish they were all colorful so I could show you some of the differences. But, uh, no, Joe, you can load it on two computers. You don't need two licenses. You just need your license key that uh, is sent to you or that's on your disk. Um, <clears throat> all right, just real quick, let's take a quick thing here. Um, Baron, indicate what part of the settings, just real quick, what part of the settings you want to know. Uh, as far as the pins on the jog pins, just remember backwards, 2, 1, 4, 3, 6, 5 for the jog pins under the shortcut code. Shortcut, scroll down to the jogging section. It's way down here. Jog 2, Jog 1, Jog 4, Jog 3, Jog 6, Jog 5. That's your X minus X plus, Y minus Y plus, Z minus Z plus. Okay? Under your colors, you can adjust your colors any way that you want. On your connection, you want to look at your license bar that's going to be underneath simulation. It'll be underneath simulation. <clears throat> You will double click on your license, you know, your uh, your controller board number and it will put it up in the primary controller box. Once you've done those three things, you want to export. You want to export your settings by going to file down to export settings. And you want to either overwrite the original, unless you want to keep the original intact, then you will create a new setting file. Name it, you know, with today's date or something. When you do that, you want to make sure you re import that setting file just so it's pointing to the correct file. <clears throat> All right. So let's look at some of the differences. As far as the top bar is concerned, our view blocks are still similar to the view blocks up here. We've got our top view, side view, front view, and perspective. Okay? They're gonna be colorful too when we're when we're you know lit up somewhat. We still have our play, stop, and pause buttons. We have our emergency stop. Now the open button, the open folder, uh, this folder icon is now this little open arrow and all here. That's the open arrow right there. It's not a folder because the folder icon, <coughs> I don't know if that's a Windows thing, but this is for Windows or Linux, I guess. But uh, that's the new look. Your zoom in, zoom out, zoom position and zoom to part, those are all still the same. And then we have our flood mist, which we never use, but our spindle button is the little router bit spindle looking tool. That used to be the one that had the silver tool with the big green arrow. Okay? So pretty much, you know, the same there. Now, as far as this, we have uh, in the TNG, we have our work position, our machine position, our motor position, and our G-code position. When we're on a line, it shows us the position of that G-code. So we've got a little bit, few more controls here because the only thing that it was showing us before was just our current axis position in the CNC USB controller. <clears throat> now, when we zeroed out the X and Y, we would click on the white button here to zero out X and Y. 
In TNG, we click on the letter. Zero out the X and Y by clicking on the letters. In CNC USB controller, when we were manually setting the Z, we would click in here and we would type in our, you know, our thickness of our touch plate or whatever the case may be. In TNG software, if we double click on that, it opens up a little drop down window and we would type that information in there. Okay. Our speed control and our override were two separate boxes in CNC USB controller. And over here we have our speed control and our spindle speed. But on our speed control now, if we click on the speed control, we can override the speed control by decreasing the percentage of the speed or increasing it by a percentage, 190% of what it currently was or is. We can reset that with the little reset button here, the little flat arrow straight across. So we can decrease and increase and all that here on the fly. The spindle speed, if you do have a spindle, uh, you can change or increase that spindle speed. Decrease it or increase it, or you can, you know, get rid of the override. Okay. Right after the pin part, did you get that now, Baron, as far as the, uh, you know, you export the settings? And overwrite. Now, these um, boxes down here, just some information for you for active G code, active M codes, and other codes. Uh, when you load your software and all, um, that will show you the active G codes and things uh, in those windows. It should. I don't have a. Let's see here. Uh, I don't know if it'll do it while I'm not connected to my computer, but let's find out. There we go. All right, let's find a sample file. Okay, these active codes are just showing you the active codes. They don't have anything to do with the G code that you're running. All right, all right, all right. Um, your jog boxes, we had the black and gray buttons down here for the X, Y, Z, and A. Uh, we now have these uh, buttons here that's just these arrows and all. On our jog box, you know, we had our slider bar from sliding back and forth. And in our jog box here, we can increase or decrease in our jog. You can also double click on here and you can change the jog speed by typing in whatever you want it to be. Okay. <clears throat> as far as the main interface, this is the main differences. Okay. Now, when it comes to these buttons on the side, we used to have uh, black XY with four green arrows about it, around it. Go to zero XY. Go to zero XY. Well, that's now this key here. The XY with the circle around it. Move to axis XY. Move axis to zero XY. Okay. We would have a red X with four yellow arrows for removing or clearing the offset, the work offset. That's this X right here, work offset to zero to clear it out. You can also, on the work position, you can also reset that to zero. You can set the work position Z axis to zero. Now, on our automatic touchers, touch off, automatic touchers, automatic touch off, you used to have a Z with one yellow arrow and three blue arrows, one gold arrow and three blue arrows. We now have a ruler with two arrows pointing up and down, measuring that offset Z position. Okay. 
Now we always had that tool position, that tool, that dangerous one when we click it would drive the bit right through our touch plate and all. That's still there. Tool offset measure. Okay, we don't want to mess with that button. And then if you do a homing position and all, which we don't have unless you set one up on your machine, that's your home position button where it goes and does its homing pattern. Goes home. All right. Now, so just showing a little bit of the difference all. Now, here's the thing. Uh, when you get that license back and everything and you paste that license code into the TNG software, when you get that email back, and you go into your license management, my licenses, and you import that new license by pasting that key code in there, you should be all set and you should have a green light at the bottom saying that you're connected. Now I have a green lit up LED saying that I'm connected because I am currently running in simulation mode because I don't have a control box with me, okay? Now in simulation mode, that allows me to come in and create a simulation. Like if I zero out my axis and everything and I hit play, it would actually play out. You know, it will run. You can see your gauges moving. You see my gauge, my X axis gauge and my Y axis gauge is moving as, I, as my gauges start, uh, you know, traveling. They're going to go to my limits. You know, uh, if you know, let me know when I'm exceeding my limits and things. So, I have a 24 inch limit. Now you see that as soon as I pass that limit of that Y, you see that Y turn red. That means I bypassed my limit on my cutting area. Okay. So now that Y is going to come back down in a moment. Right now it's cutting that arrow uh, head and it's going to come over and stand by, stand by your man, almost there. And now when it comes back home to zero, you'll see that when I get under 24 inches, because my table's 24 inches on the Y, when I get under 24 inches, you'll see that red light pop off on the Y. Okay, that's just showing your limits and stuff. Um, now the Z is red. The Z is red because I have my Z limit if we go into our, let's stop that simulation for a minute. Oops. If I go into the settings on the limits, I have the Z set at zero. So whenever the machine is at zero, it's red. If I wanted to, I could come back and make that also point negative 0.75. Negative 0.75. I kind of have it at zero because I do not want to go down into my floor, you know. I don't want to go to negative seven five. But anyway, um, if I if I clicked on that, then in my why is my Z still red? Might not be the right one. Bear with me a second. Settings. Let's turn that back to zero. I think it's in the range. I believe it's in the range. Yeah, the range. In the range. My range of movement. In the range under motion. So I had the Z axis set from zero to five inches instead of a negative number. I had it set to, you know, zero, and so when it was sitting at zero, it was red. You know, kind of like a little I did a warning. Um I don't want it to be negative seven five. I'm gonna go negative point
Bear with me. Negative point zero one. Okay. That way, if I were, if I, you know, if I were moving or something, and I said, you know, g zero z to negative point zero one, you know, I was going down, you know, into my board. Anything beyond that is going to show me that I'm actually cutting, whether I'm cutting into the wood or I'm cutting into my tabletop, you know, because remember we zero out on the top of our board, my Z is gonna be red. Now, if I come in and zero that out, it's still gonna be red because I'm still in a negative mode here. Get rid of that uh, minus sign. Oh, come on, Winnie. Negative point one. G zero Z zero. There we go. Had to move it back up. It still thought it was moving. There still thought it was sitting down there. It didn't. I it didn't realize I zeroed it out. Um. Yes. All right. Now, let's talk about the quick. The 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 real quick. Let's let's kind of talk about that. You guys have brought up the subject. We're in a kind of a Q and A now. Let's talk about this uh, now that you guys can see this a little bit. DWC quick set, okay? DWC quick set. On the DWC quick set in the CNC USB controller software, we can access the machine offset, measure offset X and Y, and we can access the menus for outside corner measurement, and we can set up our sensor for that. Or we can measure inside the center of that little circle, and we can set up the sensor for that. We have our codes here, you know, our 45802 or our 45811. Um, and, uh, you know, for our outside touch block, we have that action that we can do. Now, in TNG, we do not have that menu. Now, Planet CNC said that they would look at updating that and putting it in the next release. Kind of hope they do. Um, but we don't have that option okay we don't have our egg you know x y option you know for outside corner like that quick push of a button kind of do it to it kind of thing in this case we would use a g code okay and a g code would be something along the lines of we would use a spreadsheet not a g code i'm sorry um, a spreadsheet would be in along the lines of where it tells us where we want to, you know, uh, how thick our, we would be basically setting up our touch block in the spreadsheet and saying how big our di bit diameter is. Uh, when it, when we have that, let's see how well my internet is. Let me load that file. Stand by one second. Bum, 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 bum. <clears throat> okay. So we would have a spreadsheet that I'm working on. It's called the three axis touch plate G code generator. Okay. Uh, we're going to say a sample um, we'll run that sample touch file let's zoom in here and so with that the machine would come over and it would touch the side of our touch plate it would come down move over touch off again and it would stop itself it would raise itself up it will touch off again and then it will move back to a position that is set back and so it's a little code now that little code we should be able to create a script for I'm working on that but what scripts are is if I go into our file settings
scripts down here at the bottom. A script is a little G code. So let's find a script for a minute and let's look at the edit of that. I want to edit that in Notepad. Notepad. All it is is a G code, right? G0, X0, Y0, Z0, A0, B0, D0, blah, blah, blah. So basically, this is the code for the machine to move to its zero position on all the axes. It zeroes it out, right? Well, our little G code would be in there as well, and we would create a script for it. We would create a script for it, and then that script, we could come in and possibly build a custom button. Now, Steven, I think you had explored that a little bit, but I'm not 100% sure um, if you did or, or not. Um, we're creating your little code. Now, this file, you could uh, you know, save that uh, as a... Um, you know somewhere where you can easily access it and you just bring it in when you're touching off but I'd like to create a little button because we can create custom buttons now in this software we can create a custom button to do to run a script and uh, I want to create a custom button for the touch plate okay and once I do that you guys will have it your spreadsheet you should have very 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 soon like literally uh, I've got it written down I've got the spreadsheet created but I've got to clean it up there's a lot of code in the back end of the spreadsheet that is just it, it was junk that I created as junk uh, and um, I gotta clean it up a bit and once I do that then I will send out that spreadsheet now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get away from spreadsheets altogether uh, because many of you do not have Excel and um, with the Excel you know if you don't have Excel then it's hard to run the spreadsheet for the fourth axis for the mini carver fourth axis for the uh, in this case the DWC touch plate for you know creating threads and all of these spreadsheets that we've got um, you guys don't have Excel you can't use it so I'm in the process that's where this TNG and Stevens heard me say it a bunch of times uh, the companion that not TNG sorry the DWC digital wood carver companion software is going to have you know a spreadsheet and just to give you an example let me give you a quick shot look at this okay it's not uh, this is not the actual companion software but this is one of the elements to the companion software so let's go into my documents my visual studios my projects and let's look for the bump 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 bear with me a second we got a rounding toolpath generator project pricing sheet the surfacing toolpath the g-code generator Surfacing again, companion, 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 dates and times. Let's look at this, uh, one of these companions. Got a board foot calculator in there too. Um, let's look at one of these companions and let me see if this is the right one. Let me see if this is the right one. Obviously it's not the right one. So let's go to a different one. loading it's loading look at that load bar how pretty cool is that huh all right
Did that as far as I got with that one where it just only shows the load bar? <laughs> Alright, hold on. That's not it either. That's funny. That's going to be the load bar for the companion. Alright. Let's see there. Let's go back. That's funny. Alright, where is it at? Date and times, console, DWC surfing, G code generator, until term project. Rounding toolpath generator. Uh, let's see here. I just opened that one. So let's open this one up. It's a lot of versions, a lot of different things, a lot of different elements. So I got to just put them all together. So that one I got as far as the menus and everything. All right, so what I was gonna show you is the spreadsheets. I've got one, I can't remember what I called it now evidently, uh, cause it's not part of the companion suite. Um, the, the spreadsheets for calculating the steps per unit for all the units are in there. Um, Yes, I saw that, Stephen. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, the warp feature. The warp feature. Uh, we'll, yes, absolutely. Sorry, uh, Debbie. Um, that's That hasn't changed. That's under uh, Program Warp. Program Warp. You would still run that just the same way that you always do. Instead of the Program Advanced Warp, it's under Program Warp. Now, instead of Advanced. Okay, um, we'll go over through this more in, in, in together. But anyway, I am working on the spreadsheet, trying to get it out to you guys as soon as possible for the quick set tool uh, and in the uh, G code. In the meantime, if you wanted it, you guys have your little pins at all. I could uh, create a, a simple G code file that you would run, but you would have to use your pins every time. The little uh, quarter inch pin uh, touch pin to uh, uh, set your X and Y and things I could write a you know a temporary little program but I'd prefer to have the spreadsheet so you guys just fill in the blanks and it creates the G code for you uh, and then when TNG and when when TNG updates its next time when they you know release that update next time he said something about uh, putting that back in there as far as the inside and outside corner features so it's just a click of a button but if we can add a new button and create just a simple click to run our program, that would be awesome too. So I'm working on that. It's a, you know, it's something new, guys. We just got a, there's a few little things to get beyond, and we'll uh, we'll do it. Now TNG is also an optional software to upgrade to at this point. You do not have to upgrade to TNG. That's just an option. You do not have to buy the MK3 and 4 board and upgrade to TNG. If you want to kind of keep your machine up to date and current and stuff, it's a, it's a good idea. But if you don't want to spend the money or anything like that to have to buy a new board and all that stuff, then don't. You know? Um, it's a good idea to keep things up to date and current. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think Steven just went through a whole overhaul. Uh, did, uh, you know, a wonderful job on his older machine, Steven Allen, and just did an overhaul on upgrading boards and stuff. Uh, it's a good idea you know to uh to do that but again you know if you want to stick with cnc usb controller stick with it you know what i mean you don't have to change it um all right now yes yeah, stephen mm -hmm. allen how to estimate time to finish okay no floyd once you convert no you cannot use both tng and cnc usb controller once you convert your board to tng uh, you can the CNC USB controller will no longer be able to be used uh, if you ever want to revert back if you ever want to revert back to CNC USB controller then you go to machine controller advanced revert to v1 and then TNG can no longer be used so it's one or the other um, no, I'm not. I'm not skipping a question. Uh, the estimated time to finish. So that estimated time to finish is going to be updated. It's going to be updated. 
uh, where it shows it in there. There's gonna, you know, that's gonna be another update. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we can at least we can at least show our G code time. You know, the estimated runtime of the G to G code and everything. And that involves, and we're gonna we'll wrap this up with this. That involves adding a new tab, a new tab. Okay. So we're going to add a new tab real quick right here called G code info or G code time or G code something. All right, in order to write a new tab or create a new tab, we've got to write some code. Bear with me a second, let me go to it in my I'm not going to say standby, but standby. <laughs> Planet CNC. I want that to be in. Bear with me a second. That's what I'm looking for. Stand by. I had a little code uh, to, um, I had a little cheat sheet code and I don't know where it is. So it's probably in my document somewhere, but that's all right. We're going to just. Um, Adding custom features in Planet CNC, user defined features in the Planet CNC under the blog. There's a new article called Adding Custom Features in Planet CNC TNG. Very cool. All right. Using the warp with Planet CNC TNG software. Miss Debbie Miller, using the warp with Planet CNC TNG software. There's a little uh, tutorial there. Uh, what I'm looking for is adding the custom button. So bear with me a second. How to create a custom tab in the Planet CNC software. Yep, shot. Okay. All right, in order to add a new tab, uh, we need to create a what's called a state, a state file. One, two, three, four, five. There can be five states added to the tab box. <clears throat> okay, up to five states. And so one and two are already taken. What I mean by that, we already have a speed, we already have an IO. One and two are already taken. Three, four, and five are empty. So how we would do this is, we would come in and we have to write a little bitty code and I'm going to download all the parameters, the uh, state file, I'm gonna download all the parameters in that state file for me. I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna open up that state file in Notepad Maybe not. There it is. All right. And all the states, probe state, uh, camera offset state, tool state, all of the states and their codes are here. I want to come down to the G code state because I don't want to. You know, I could put every. I could have every one of these showing on my on my machine. Uh, you know, and just be able to see all these individual states and stuff. But I want to come down to the G code. So bear with me a second. Let me find my G code. Oh. Right here, G code properties. 
And I want to copy all these G code properties right here. Copy. Okay. Now, at the top of this, you will see name and then columns all and then named underscore line this little code right here. So I'm going to create a new blank little text document, little notepad. And I'm going to create that. I'm going to paste that in there for that G code properties. And at the top, I'm going to go back into that state file. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to collect select all of this. These three lines all the way to the dotted lines. Copy. Copy, copy, Roger, Roger. Okay. Um, okay. Once I've copied those, I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to paste them at the very top of this page. File. Save as. I'm going to save this document as an all files type, all file type. I'm going to save it where I can find it in my desktop CNC jobs folder. And I'm going to call this, we, we typically want this to be the same file name as uh, Planet CNC, so I'm going to call this Planet. CNC um, let me see what 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 I want to call it I want to call it planet CNC 64 64 bit that's what I want to call it so one more time planet CNC 64 dot s t a t e three because state state one and two are already taken i'm going to click save and i'm going to save that in my documents folder now i'm going to go to that documents folder desktop folder sorry i'm going to go to that desktop folder i'm going to go into cnc jobs and i'm going to grab that state file i just created I'm going to right click. Yes, Dave Garvin, I will show auto touch off. Give me one second. My file explorer is kind of locked up a second. Uh, oh, I thought I saw a flash. My file explorer is locked up for a moment. Bear with me one second. I done got locked up. Okay. Alright. Desktop. CNC jobs. I'm going to right click on that. Oh, oh, uh, Google was doing its uh, little update in my back end. That's why everything was all crazy. Okay, I'm going to copy that or cut it, whatever. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go into my C drive. I'm going to go into my um, program files x86 folder. I'm going to go down into my planet CNC. I'm going to paste that file and I'm going to click continue. Okay. Now I'm going to close that file explorer. I'm going to exit out of Planet CNC TNG and I'm going to reopen it.
There's a process going on in my computer in the back end. All right, Planet CNC is 64. All right, bear with me a second. What do we need to run the fourth axis on TNG? Uh, we need the fourth axis setting file. And notice that I have a tab that says all. All right here. And it shows my current. Well, I don't want the word to be all. I don't want the name to be all because it's not all of them. So I'm going to take a second real quick. I'm going to go back into my desktop CNC uh, jobs, my state file. Open that back up with Notepad. And I'm going to change that all right there. I'm going to change that all right there to uh, G. Code G code, right? G code, uh, G code, let me see. G code, yeah, I'll just call it G code. That's fine. Whatever you want to name, you can get creative with the names. All right, we're going to save that file. I'm going to close that. I'm going to right click and one more time I'm going to uh, that new save change that I just did. I'm going to uh, get my <clears throat> copy from that. I'm going to go back into my Planet CNC folder. I'm going to paste that. I want to replace the file in that destination. Now I can close this. I'm going to go ahead one more time. I'm going to exit out of the software and I'm going to reopen it. Now I should have a tab called G code. In that G code, it shows me the current line of the G code that I'm on. It'll show me the G code file size. It'll show me the line count. How many lines are in that G code? It'll show me the length. How many inches of code? Uh, you know how, how how you know how how many inches it cuts and the G code time. G code time. Okay. G code time. The G code limit. Uh, probably about the, I think the limit uh, the maximum Z limit or something. But um, anyhow, the G code time. And so that will show me my current G code state. You know, so now I have my speed, I've got a G code little thing, and that time unfortunately does not count down. You know, it doesn't count down. I don't think it does. Somebody said it didn't. But uh that at least show you how long the, the file run is, you know. Okay. Alright, Jimmy A, where can you get the fourth axis setting file? You can get it uh, from the Facebook group once I upload it after I create it. I created the mini. The mini is uploaded now. I uploaded it this evening. Uh, the fourth axis setting file is next. You will have that. Uh, I'm going to be working on my fourth axis, uh, you know, today or tomorrow. I need to carve something. I need to actually carve a project to make sure all the steps and everything for the fourth axis settings are correct before I put that file out there because I do not want things going haywire. So I will have that uh, post haste <laughs> as soon as possible. All right, can you show the auto touch off in the auto touch off in TNT USB controller or TNG <laughs> in TNG Dave Garbett is the ruler with the two arrows and the two lines. That's your auto touch off tool. Auto touch off tool is the ruler with the two arrows in the two lines between the two lines. That's your auto touch off. Okay. Get ready for another shot. Somebody said, all right. Uh, all 
let's let's go back and let's see what questions we have here. Um, Uh, I uploaded the surfacing part to Facebook. Thank you, Stephen. Got that. Um, Ralph Bolanos. I was late. How do I know I can upgrade to this software? Purchased my machine in February of last year. Um, Ralph, killing me, man. Uh, you want to look in your board and make sure you have an MK3424. Here's one way to find out. Uh, is your control pendant the little two inch by six inch control pendant or it is the big six by six inch box? Ralph, two inch by six inch control pendant or the big six inch by six inch box? Your control pendant. And anything 2016 and earlier, we're in 2018 now, so um, if you have the 2x6 inch little handheld control pendant, then you have the MK34 board. You have the MK34 board, Ralph. You can upgrade. Okay, if you want to. Alright, so here's a little tutorial talking about how to add custom tabs. You can add up to five. Two of them are already taken. You don't have to have the I.O. there, so you can remove that one and you can set up, you know, four more. Whatever the case may be. Um, add custom tabs. Well, we also have the option, if we go back to the Planet CNC blog, we also have the option of adding user toolbar buttons uh, in Planet CNC. And those user toolbar buttons, that's what I'm working on to be able to create a button for our touch off tool. Okay, so that's what I'm working on. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. It's very easy to do. It's very easy to do, but um, I just need to go through and create that little tutorial. You guys can do it yourself. It's in the blog section of the CNC USB controller. Custom button examples for top toolbar. Um, Mary Lynn saw the video clip about the new laser attachment. Uh, when it raises, it moves the red X as you get closer uh, to the working surface, it moves. Uh, you almost have to have it right down the material. No, that is not true, Baron. If that is true for you, then you have not got your X set up properly. You need to take and loosen those set screws and you need to adjust that arrow, uh, those those two laser beams, uh, so they are set exactly. Uh, no matter what distance you are, they do not change. So you need to make that adjustment. I will have a step-by-step -step information for that. Uh, I will have a little PDF instruction. But if your zero, if your X is changing as you go up and down, then you have the X lasers, the two lasers set up incorrectly. Okay? So I will have step by step on that. I'm about to set up my laser and I will be uh, putting my X laser on there and I will uh, set up, create a little step by step PDF. All right? The best possible it would be probably to set that laser uh, pretty close. Um, you know, um, you would be probably either at your highest top position when you set the laser or you'd be at your lowest position when you set up the laser X. Um, and one of the two uh, makes it to where when you let, raise that laser up and down, it does not change the position of that X. It stays exactly where it should be no matter what height you're at. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hopefully this gives you a little bit of a kind of a look and a glimpse at uh, the TNG software, a little bit of information. So once again, you want to make sure that your USB CNC controller driver is up to date. You know, you want to make sure that your driver is up to date, that 01001. 
Once that driver is up to date in the CNC USB controller software, then you want to download the TNG software either off of your flash drive or off of Planet CNC's website under their software department. You want to download the .30 beta version of the TNG, .30. When you have that downloaded, you want to run and install that uh, TNG software. When you get that installed, you want to copy the setting file and put the setting files in your Planet CNC folder on your C drive in the Planet uh, Program Files x86 Planet CNC folder. Once you have that setting file in, you want to import it in. You can adjust on the settings. You can adjust your color your colors to adjust you know whatever color you want on your shortcuts you want to scroll down and you want to adjust the pins for your pendant if your pendant's not working or your pendant's backwards you need to set the pins two one four three six five on the jog x minus x plus y minus y plus z minus z plus jog two jog one jog four jog three jog six stock five once you do that you want to in those settings you want to go to connection and underneath the word simulation your license will be or your your board will be there you want to double click on that and make sure that is in the primary controller box when you double click it will rewrite it in the primary controller box once you do that make sure that you export those settings to save those changes that you just made you want to go into your help license management activate G code generator. Now this is for you guys and girls that are uh, transferring over from CNC USB controller. This does not apply for new users that just bought their machine, uh, uh, you know, this week uh, that have the Planet C or the TNG software. But you need to for the you guys transferring over, migrating over, you need to activate a code. You activate, click on your board. It'll be listed under the device here, list. You click on that, you copy that code, and then you email it to support at planetcnc.com. Support at planetcnc.com. planet-cnc.com. That email template has been uh, available for you in the Facebook page, okay? And once you get that key back, you will import that key under the help menu, license management, my licenses. You will paste, import, and paste that key there. There's no key there for me to paste, so uh, it's getting an error code. But from there, you should have a green LED light, and you should be connected, and you should be ready to go. It's that easy. I know it doesn't sound easy or look easy, but it is. It is. It's straightforward. All right. If you have any questions, you need help with anything, let me know. Okay. And um, I want to thank you all. Let's see what we got here. Um, most times, we just use the live time to have fun with Laney. Then go back to watch it later to get the info we need. <laughs> That's probably true. What I'd like to be able to do is have like just actual short little uh, two minute, three minute videos of showing these things. How to install TNG, how to install the laser engraver, how to install, you know, how to use the spreadsheet for the fourth axis for the mini carver, how to use the spreadsheet, these, all these little tutorial videos. Once I have them up on the uh, Spindle TV channel, then you can go to those. The live event, those long videos, there's no sense in having to weed through them you know, when I can have these short little video clips for you. Um, uh, yes, the Planet CNC is compatible with the 6 watt laser. Let's talk about that two seconds. File, settings. Under settings, you go down to spindle. If you have a laser, you will change the output pin speed to output 2. Your minimum process will be 0. Your maximum speed will be 10 for the digital laser, okay? If you have a spindle, your output pin on your speed will be six. Your minimum will be 12,000 
your maximum will be 24,000. Now, how can you have your spindle and laser at the same time if you have both? You will create a separate spindle file and you will create a separate laser file because you're not using them both at the same time. You will export a setting file for your spindle and you will create one and you will export a setting file for your laser. Okay? But your spindle is going to be output p speed, uh, pin 6, 12,000, 24,000. Okay? Your laser is going to be output pin 2 with a minimum of 0, a maximum of 10. That's your power. You want to make sure use PWM is checked for both spindle or laser. You want to click OK. You want to export that setting file to export the change that you have just made. Whether you're exporting a new file just by, you know, for your spindle or a new file for your laser, you need to set that up. Hopefully that will um, uh, explain the laser. Yes, it is compatible. All right, and get set up in the setting uh, the settings. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for your time. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure. I hope that, uh, you know, I know this wasn't a design class or anything like that, but we got to cover this stuff somehow, some way, and this is a great way to get all of you guys and girls on the same page uh, and knowing all the information and stuff. Uh, and as always, uh, are there any other questions before we leave? Let's take a look at our Facebook page and see if there are any questions on Facebook that I'm missing that I haven't seen. If you guys and girls are watching me on Facebook and you'd like to be able to interact live on the YouTube page, be sure, be sure to sign up. Be sure to sign up. Uh, uh, make a create a YouTube channel and uh, you know sign up with YouTube so you can come in in the chat. So let's see what we got here. I don't see any. Um, let's go down to my original class posting, my original class video posting, which was up here, not down there. Uh, it was right there, and I see uh, comments. No comments. All right. That is it for this evening's little uh, turnabout. Um, again, I want to thank you very much for your time. Have a great night. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.